Hello everyone. Today I thought I'd share a slightly easier approach to using biomes if you're going for a more precise outcome. Biomes for MapMagic 2 is an amazing tool and it allows you to blend multiple different looking terrains together. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So I've created an empty scene and I'm going to create a new graph here. So map magic empty graph and I'm going to call this biomes. I'm going to drag this in. There we go. Now the important thing to keep in mind is where are you going to add your tiles, so which axis. So I'm going to do everything on the Z here, but I'll explain in a bit why this is relevant. So let's open up our graph and we'll start off the traditional way. So we're going to add a biome set and I'll add four layers in total as I have four tiles. And I'm going to start off with a simple graph. And as you can see, automatically everything will become the simple graph. So this is what you're used to. Now, next up, I'm going to add Badlands. I'm going to add Dunes. And I'm going to add snow plains. So we have four different types of landscapes and we're going to make them all blend together. But the traditional way using um, levels, as you might've seen in the official explanation video, or is it levels, is not really precise and it's actually a bit hard to use. So I'm going to show you a slightly different way. So we're going to start off the same way using a simple form. And this is where that axis comes into play. So, you know, we have X and Z and I put everything in the Z. So I'm going to use Z here. The scale you need to keep in mind will be, you know, the amount of tiles. So I have four tiles, so the scale needs to be four. And that is only if you want to have, you know, four different, you know, maps basically on a, you know, in this scene. So if you only want to use three, then, you know, scale will be three, for example. So the important thing here with each map as well, and I'll, I'll show that in a bit, well, let's do that right now, is that the height of these maps is all the same. So, you know, height 250, they all need to be 250. So every single map you've created needs to have the height of, well, it doesn't have to be 250, but they all need to be the same, basically. So as you can see here, you know, 250 again, and they're all 250. Now, if you've actually created your map by, you know, using, well, one would be 250, the other one would be 200, you will get strange results and it won't actually look like what you're used to. Now, if you're thinking, okay, so how am I going to, you know, lower the height map, basically, you just need to use a curve. So let's open up the, you know, the simple one. As you can see, this one already has a curve. And this is what you're going to do to alter the height instead of changing the height here. If you already had this at, you know, 40, just add a curve, you know, before the height output. So modifiers curve and just curve it until you get the similar result as before. So that's the important thing with biomes is all of them need to have the same height. So something to keep in mind. And yes, it would definitely be recommended to do 250 as adding new maps will sometimes reset that height value. So I'm not really sure, you know, why it's, uh, why you're able to change it at all really. It's, uh, it's not the way to go for it. And, you know, that's a mistake I initially made. I was changing height and, you know, the result looked good. But, yeah, I didn't know the limitations of that. So, something to keep in mind. So, next up, you know, normally we'd go with the levels approach. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to select selector. And let's duplicate this. And let's duplicate this again. So let's drag this up a bit. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select this one, this one, and this one. And this will be the Badlands, Dunes, and 
snow planes. There we go. Now, if I really want to keep that, you know, differentiation of those different terrains, it really is simple. So the end outcome has to be one. So if you are using, you know, four different ones, your, you know, scale of four, we do 0 0.25 and it needs to start at 0 0.25 because this is the initial one that's already selected. So 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 to 1 and yeah as you can see that creates you know our um, you know the one total and we have all of them combined into one plane and as you can see you know they're really distinctive noticeable planes the transition is basically the amount of blending so if I put this to 1 uh, to zero sorry you would literally see your different maps you know with close to no blending whatsoever I mean there's a tiny bit of texture blending and that's pretty much it but as you can see you know it wouldn't blend whatsoever but the nice thing here is that if you want to keep your terrains as distinctive as possible with just minimal blending this is a really good approach so we can take 0 0.1 for example and let's do that with all of them. And yeah, there we go. You know, there's a really small transition. And basically we're, uh, you know, we're keeping, re really keeping that distinctive look. Now, if this is something you don't actually want and you want there to be, you know, a lot more blending, then obviously you could completely change this to whatever value works for you. And there we go. And there will be a lot more blending and, you know, it will, they'll blend into each other a lot more. And you'll, you'll lose detail of each map. So as you can see, the dunes basically just completely gets blended in and only the middle parts will be really distinctive and visible. So if that's the look you're going for, that's great. But the nice thing with using selector instead of levels is that it really does allow you to easily control this with just, you know, a numer numerical value that was hard to pronounce so it's a lot easier doing it this way in my opinion and you know it really gives you a bit more control instead of you know guessing with those level curves as you know that's a bit harder so if you go with um, levels you really have to you know mess with these values I don't know personally I think it's a lot harder to do and a lot less precise rather than just typing in the numbers and well literally managing it that way so yeah it's a really short video, but I really wanted to show this as, you know, it will make life easier if you are going to use biomes. It will give you a lot more control, um, in my personal opinion. Now, obviously, you could change this as well. So we start at 0 0.25. We could start at 0 0.1. And as you can see, the, our Badlands piece will actually get a lot bigger and will lose more of the initial output. So you know, like I said, you have a lot of control if you do it like this. So yeah, really cool. So really short video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.